The following is a Thorpe TV production brought to you in cooperation with Jack Thorpenson. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time once again for Saturday Gun Chat, that relaxing chime way up north near the Canadian border, where Mr. Holster reflects on his week of events and talks about guns. Let's have a big rousing rounding round of applause for that Saturday gun guy. Here he is, Mr. Holster! <laughs> Saturday Gun Guy Jack, come on, you gotta come up with a better, a better script than that. <laughs> I mean, I've never even seen that guy up on Saturday. He's like, he's got a, a bag of ice on his head and he's passed out. <laughs> Mr. Holster's the big, oh, Mr. Holster, hey, yeah. Hey, howdy, parts, it's me, Mr. Holster, yeah. Well, let's get the show on the road to the sunny slopes of long ago. Ah, that doesn't heat you up and cool you down all the same time. I tell you, it's been quite a week here. The rain finally stopped, and we're getting things done. Got the steel targets, those beautiful hard targets from Steel Target, put up on the range, and we're in business we, we, of course, we had, we had a little problem. We had some cows out this week, so I chased a calf for over a mile the other day, but everybody's back intact, and the fences are fixed, and, yeah, back to business as usual, and hopefully the rain won't come back for a while. And Jack and I were talking about this. Excuse me, I, <coughs> a little something in my throat. Jack, were, Jack and I were talking about this the other night. We went to the VFW, and... It's been a tough time. We haven't been, hasn't been too profitable, profitable in operation here this summer with all the rain. And, and I said to Jack, Jack, we shouldn't get too upset because you can't buy happiness. And Jack said, no, you're right, you can't, but you can sure pour it. <laughs> and Jack's, Jack's been to the doctor this week. He's actually got some health issues. He's had this recurring case of heartburn, and he's come up with this new drink to kind of help himself along, it's one part orange juice, one part milk of magnesia, and one part vodka, and Jack's calling it a Phillips screwdriver. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's, let's get on to the show today. This is what we're going to talk about this morning. We're talking about guns I loved but didn't keep. Yeah. I hate to do this, but I'm going to put this aside. Put it right there. Yeah, it's kind of an odd title, I know, but there's certain guns that I, I've had in my lifetime, and some of them I bought repeatedly, that I just love the gun, but there's just these little things about it. And this is, before you get upset if these are some of the guns you carry or your favorite gun, this is all on Mr. Holster, that he didn't keep these guns, and hits his own little quirks that he doesn't like them for a particular reason. And it's kind of frustrating because I've had some that I've repeatedly used and bought and had for years and, and let them go and then eh, buy them back and, and I still let them go for the same reason. We're going to talk about that and we're going to start with the first one. And the first one is the Browning High Power. Yeah, the Browning High Power. And if you're familiar, if you've been a longtime subscriber, which I don't have a lot of longtime subscribers, I usually lose them after the first week. But... If you've been a longtime subscriber, you'll remember when I, I sold my Browning High Power to buy my dog Spur. Yeah, that beautiful German Shepherd. And some people are quite upset that I sold that gun. It was a beautiful Browning High Power. But, you know, the Browning High Power is, it's the top of my list. Well, yeah, pretty much the top of my list of guns I love, but I I just never keep them because there's just these two little things I hate about that gun. Number one, I really dislike the magazine disconnect. And I know what you're going to say next. Well, you could you can override that. Lots of people do. And Mr. Holster, he, he spent a lot of time working for attorneys and to, to modify a safety put on by the manufacturer is just something he's never going to do. He doesn't want to assume all the liability, that product liability that is now 
a liability because the product was produced to be safe and I've made it unsafe and then somebody down the road, you see what I'm saying? So I just, I will not change a safety as much as I'd like to, I won't. Number two, I never, ever liked the safety. And I'm sure there's probably aftermarket safeties I could replace it with that I'd like better. But you go back to that magazine disconnect. But to me, the safety always looks, it, it looks really cheesy on it. It looks like somebody just screwed it on, you know? You compare it to a 1911, especially nowadays, the 1911s have, there's so many different safeties you can put on a 1911. So many different sizes and enhanced safeties. And you look at the, the safety on a high power, and I just, I just feel like, if it looked, if it was a 1911 safety, I'd like it so much better. That's the same thing I think every time. And so, it, but it really comes down to that magazine disconnect. It's it's a deal breaker for me. And I've owned five high powers in my lifetime, and they aren't cheap guns. I buy them because I like it, but then I just can't live with that, and I let them go. Number two, yeah, there's only four here actually, but. Yeah, there really is only four, four guns. Number two is the CZ-75. What a great gun. And this is what bothers me about it. I don't like... I really like each trigger pull to be the same. There's there's the one exception I have, which would be the SIG-220. I, I let that slide because I love that gun so much. But the CZ-75 is unique in that you can carry it cocked and locked. You don't have to have a long double action trigger pull and then a short on the second. You can set it up so each trigger pull is the same, a short single action trigger pull, and carry it cocked and locked like a 1911. And the upside to it is, when you do that, is if you have a round that doesn't go off because you got a light primer strike, you got a, the ability to just pull the trigger and have a second strike. Where in 1911, you're going to have to cock that hammer to have that second strike, you see? So you get a little advantage there. But what I can never get over on this is that, that pivoting trigger versus a 1911. Because as soon as I set it up for carrying it cocked and locked, I, I compare it to a 1911 and that straight clean, crisp trigger pull, although a CZ-75 is an exceptional trigger pull in single action, I'm not going to argue that, but that pivoting trigger, you see, that's my hang-up. That's why these are really kind of hang-ups. I probably should have entitled this, Guns I Love But Got Rid Of Because Mr. Holster Has Hang-Ups. Pretty much. So I have owned so many CZ-75s, and I finally decided to sell it because I don't use it because of that, and then not long after that, I decided I want another one. I, they've gone through my hands so many of them in my lifetime. That would be number two. Number three is a more current manufactured gun, and I just love this gun. Oh, I love this gun. The Springfield XDS 45 in a 4.0. Oh, that was so accurate and such a nice gun. But my hang-up is... I, I really have no need to have a small gun. I carried a gun for, I don't want to. I don't even want to talk about how many decades, and I had no problem concealing a full service gun. So I don't. I don't really see why I needed to be so small. I really would like to have a full grip frame on my gun, and to get that thing up to snuff with some decent amount of rounds in it, you got to have an extended mag just to get a six round magazine out of it and then it then it's a full full grip frame so it solves my problem but it doesn't because I drop that bag and then I got to change my finger my hand position on the grip frame to drop that mag you see that's my little hang up I, w I don't want to do that I want to drop the mag and put a new one in without changing my my uh, position on the gun one bit and I just couldn't let that go and I'm I really agonized on that one because I love that gun. It was so accurate. In the four inch barrel, it is an exceptional firearm in accuracy. And I had to let it go because I just couldn't get past that not having a full grip frame. That was number three. 
Now to number four, and number four I'm going to add three different guns that I own multiples of, and yeah, you can cry for me on this because it's it is painful. If I would never have sold them, I could sell them now for oh so much more money. Yes, Colt Pythons, Diamondbacks, and Detective models. Yeah, and I had them all. And I just couldn't get past. And I've got my Ruger. I love this gun, this Ruger Match Champion that I got from Jack. <laughs> of course, you know, it cost me a lot of money, though. It cost me twenty-seven fifty to get my truck back when he lost it in that gambling spree. And you know, this, this is like a $700 gun, and I paid twenty-seven fifty to get my truck back. So, pretty much was out over two grand on the deal, but then again, I just love rubbing it in Jack's nose and the fact that he lost his gun to me. At any rate, I love this gun. Very accurate, very nicely made, and here you'll see the, the cylinder release. You just push on it backwards, and out it comes, and all those Smith & Wessons I carried over the years, the same thing. You pull them back like this. Very simple. You just there it goes, and the Colt, you have to literally push the magazine release backward this way, and I just, I just couldn't handle it. Yeah, another one of my weaknesses there, it just, it, I just couldn't get into doing that versus I could do, I could do this one, which is a straight in. The, the Security 6, which is what I, I cut my teeth on, and of course the GP100, SP101, that's fine, but I just couldn't get into pulling that magazine, or the cylinder release backward on the Colts, and, and, and I, you know, I love the Python, and I let it go for that, and then I got another one because I loved it, and I let it go, for, it's, and it's kind of painful when I think about it now on the Diamondbacks. And, and the detectives models. So there you go guys, there's Saturday Gun Chat. We, I've wasted 12 minutes and 20 seconds of your life just talking about Mr. Holster's quirks and the, the beautiful great guns that he just he can't hang on to because these little things bother him. But to that I say to each their own and when you find that gun that you have no quirk with and you shoot it really well, embrace it and go out and buy two more. Yeah. Buy another one so you got a backup and another one so you got parts for the other two. Because you don't know, especially nowadays, what's going to happen. There you go, guys. There's my show, Guns I Loved and, and I Didn't Keep. And I still, I miss them, but I have a little more as I get older. I have a little more self-control, and when I see one in a gun shop, I don't buy it. It's easy on the Colts, because now they're so expensive, I can't afford them. Which is painful to think of all the ones I had and just let go. But Thanks for tuning in. Before I leave you, I'm having a contest. It's called the American Gunfighter 5000 Sub Giveaway. And all you got to do to get in my contest today is, number one, like this video. Number two, be a subscriber. I got them mixed up. Number three, just comment in the comments section. Tell me about the gun you you love, but and why you couldn't keep it. And tag it with Colt Python. Yeah, I I feel sad about all those that slipped through my hands. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Till next time, from Jack and Mr. Holster. Go out and stay safe.